Okay, this is from your section four problems. Here's problems nine through 15. And in all uh, of these cases, they use these two functions, f of x is equal to x squared plus one and g of x is equal to x minus four. So in the first problem, they're saying, what's f plus g of three? Well, by definition, this is f of three plus g of three. Now to figure out what f of three is, you're gonna plug three in here into the rule for f. f of three would be three squared plus one. f of three, would be three squared plus one, which is nine plus one, which is 10. Plus g of three, you're gonna plug three in here for the rule for g. g of three is three minus four. g of three is three minus four, which is negative one. So I have 10 plus negative one, well that's nine, and there's your answer. The next one says f minus g of zero. f minus g of zero would be f of zero minus g of zero. So f of zero, you're gonna plug zero now into the rule for f. f of zero would be zero squared plus one, zero squared plus one, which is just one. And g of zero, g of zero, I'm gonna use this rule, would be zero minus four, which is negative four. So I have one minus negative four. That's this minus sign right here. g of zero was negative four, so subtracting a negative is the same as adding the opposite. So my answer is five. The next part up here, I'm trying not to lose the rules there, there we go, would be f times g of four. Now f times g of four is f of four times g of four. So f of four would be what I get when I plug four in here. So let's see, f of four would be four squared plus one, that's 16 plus one, 17. And g of four is four, plug it right in, four minus four, which is zero. Well, that's gonna be easy to multiply. This is 17 times zero, and that's zero. Now, f over g of five is f of five over g of five. So it's the f of five, again, back to this rule, would be five squared plus one, which is 26. Uh, g of five, I use this rule, would be five minus one, or excuse me, five minus four, which is one. So I have 26 over one, which is just 26. And that's how problems nine through 15 work. Those are pretty straightforward. All right, then we get to the composition problems. In problem 35, in part A, they wanted you to find F circle G of X and G circle F of X using these two functions here for function F and function G. Now you have to remember that this does not mean times, this is uh, co composition or to compose. So when it says F zero, uh, zero, F circle G or F compose G, this is F of G of X. Notice that the G is closest to the X, so that gets first, and then you take the outside function of that. So this is F of, now G of X is defined to be X minus one. So in for G of X, I'm gonna put X minus one. And then I'm gonna find F of X, or in this case, f of x minus one. So I'm gonna plug all of x minus one in for the variable there. And this is the tricky part because people don't like plugging in weird stuff in for the variable, like plugging in numbers. But in for x, I'm gonna replace x with x minus one. And what's happening to the x? It's being squared. So the x minus one is being squared, which you could go ahead and, and square it out. And, you know, x minus one times x minus one, do FOIL. And you get that. Now. Will you get the same thing if you change the order? Like, is it commutative? Remember commutative, like for addition, you change the order, you get the same sum? Well, it's, as it turns out, it's not always commutative. It might be, it depends on the functions. But in general, no, it's not commutative. It's not gonna work every time. And if it doesn't work even in just one time, then it's not commutative. All right, so this would be G of F of X. Now this is G of F of X is X squared. So I replace the f of x, this part right here, with x squared. And then I'm taking g of that. Now remember, I'm plugging this in for my variable, which would be right there in the rule. So I'm gonna get x squared minus one. All right, now they aren't that different, but they are different. You see that it has the extra term here. So that's what they wanted you to do in part A, is to get those two. Then they want you to uh, look at these if on a graphing calculator. They want you to graph them. So. I went ahead and uh, I actually have 
uh, four of them here, but I'm just looking at the top two that are highlighted. There's the x squared minus 2x minus 1. That's this guy. And then here's the x squared minus 1 right there, x squared minus 1. Now, if I graph these, you're going to see two parabolas that are going to be similar looking, but as you can tell, they are different. All right, this guy here is this one that's kind of to the right, and then this one here is this one that's kind of to the left and down a little bit. And you can see that those graphs are indeed different graphs. All right, now the next one up is a very similar problem. Oh, and by the way, also in part B, they want you to determine from the graphs if they're, if they're equal. So you would say F circle G of X does not equal G circle F of X. It doesn't show it here and it doesn't, didn't show it in the graph. All right, so here's another one that's uh, same kind of directions. Here are uh, two, just two different functions. Here's f of x, here's g of x, and for problem 37. So f circle g of x, this is a good practice, is f of g of x. Now, if you ever forget which one goes first, it's the one that's closest to the x. That's the inside function, that's the outside function. So this is f of, now what's g of x? Well, g of x is 5 minus x. So this is f of 5 minus x. And 5 minus x now gets plugged in for the variable in the rule of f, the outside function. So I'm going to put, plug it right in there for where the x is. So I'm going to have 3 times 5 minus x in parentheses plus 5. That's 15, uh, distributing 15 minus 3x plus 5. That's uh, 20 minus 3x. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, do g circle f of x. So that g of f of x, let's see if we get the same thing this time. I don't think we do. This is g of, now f of x is 3x plus 5, so I put the 3x plus 5 right in there. And now I'm going to take g of this, which means I'm plugging all of this in right there for the x. So careful with that subtraction. It's going to be 5 minus all of that, so in parentheses, 3x plus 5. So if I get rid of the parentheses, it's like a negative 1 there that I'm distributing by. I get minus 3x minus 5, and the 5's cancel, so I just get negative 3x. So these don't look the same at all. And if I was to, uh, for part B, if I was to graph these, uh, let me clear this out. I'm going to have to change my window real quick. I'm going to go from, uh, how about uh, my y values here. Let me bump my y values up here quite a bit. Uh, let's go to 20 here by 5s. Let's go here by 20, also by 5s here. All right, so now when I go to graph these, as you can see, that's the two that are not highlighted. So I need to go over there and take these off and put these on so that when I graph them, oh, I didn't write it down right, did I? Uh, you see one of them anyway. I think I got the wrong numbers there. Let me try this again. Let me check my window. From negative to up, I lost a zero there. Let's put a zero there. That'll make all, hopefully, the difference in the world. And let's, no, I, I missed something else again. Well, you can see there are two different lines, but I don't see why I, let me check my window again. I went from negative 10 to 20. Up. Oh, got the zero here as well. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Now let's try the graph. Here we go. Now we're cooking. There's one, and there's the other one. Okay. This one here, this one here is this guy with the winder set way up at 0, 20, and then this is the one that goes through the origin right there. Okay, so you can see not only are the functions different, uh, the graphs are different, so uh, F circle G of X does not equal G circle F of X. Okay, next guy up, number 45 is kind of a neat little problem. It gives you two functions, kind of similar to the last two, and they want you to compose them. So here we go, f circle g of x, this is good practice, this is f of g of x, which is f of 4 minus x, and now I'm going to plug all that in right there for x, and that's going to be 5 times the quantity 4 minus x plus 4, now, normally I just work my steps down, but I didn't give myself enough room here, so I'm kind of doing them sideways here. So this is 20 minus 5x plus 4, which is uh, 24 minus 5x, or if you want to, you can write negative 5x plus 24 either way. 
This guy here, this is g of f of x. Let me raise this up just a little bit so you can see it better. So this is g of, now uh, f of x is 5x plus 4. And now that gets plugged in right there in the rule for g. So that's going to be 4 minus all that, 5x plus 4. So that's going to be, uh, here, let me put it down here. 4 minus 5x minus 4, and I'm going to get negative 5x. So you can see these two are different as well. Now, in this problem, it says not only uh, am I supposed to find the two functions, but I'm supposed to state whether or not they're the same. So in part B, I, you can see that negative 5x plus 24 does not equal negative 5x. So that means f circle g of x does not equal g circle f of x. Okay, but then it says something about show a table of values. And I just created a quick table here. And I'm going to plug in three easy numbers, 0, 1, and 2. And I'm going to plug them in to the rules that I got from part A and part B. And I'm going to plug them in to show that these numbers are not going to be the same. So if I plug 0 in here, I get 24. 24. If I plug 0 in here, I get 0. If I plug 1 in here, negative 5 times 1 plus 24 is 19. If I plug 1 in here, I get negative 5. If I plug 2 in here, I get negative 5 times 2 is negative 10 plus 24 is 14. And if I plug 2 in here, I get negative 10. So you can see that they're never equal. Now, I don't know how many he wants in the table. I think in 3 or 4 would be plenty. All right. And then that leaves the last problem in which you're using a couple of graphs. So you can see here that I've got this, these two graphs are used for problems 51, 53, and 55. Here's y equals f of x. Here's y equals g of x. If it helps you out, go ahead and put the 2, 3, and 4 in for both of these. And so anyway, here's y equals f of x. Here's y equals g of x. Now I'm going to have to refer to these each time here and of course my graphs for you know it's going to have to get scooted up but this is f plus g of 3 is f of 3 plus g of 3. Now I don't have rules to plug in and find the, these y values but I can do that using the graph. For example f of 3 here's my graph for f of x find the x value of 3. It's equal to 2. So this part's 2 then find g of 3. Over here is 3 for the rule for g. And it's equal to 1. So I have 2 plus 1, which is 3. That was easy. Now here I have f divided by g of 2. So this is f of 2 divided by g of 2, which is now f of 2. Here's the 2 for the rule for f. And it's at 0 right here on the x-axis. So this is 0. g of 2 there's the 2, here's the g. It's equal to 2. So I have 0 over 2, which is 0. And that's how you do it. You just use the, uh, the graphs and find the y values from the graph. Start at the x, go up to the graph, and then find the y value that corresponds. This one here, I'm going to raise it up as high as I can here without cutting off the graphs. There we go. I have f circle g of 2. Well, this is f of g of 2. Now, g of 2... I have to use the graph over here. G of 2, I just did that a second ago. G of 2 is 2. So this, the part that I'm underlined is 2. So this is f of 2. Now f of 2, back here, here's the x value for the graph of f. It's 0. Easy. Let's see if I get the same thing the other way around. G of f of 2. Now f of 2, I just did that. That was 0. So this is 0, this part right here. So this is g of 0. g of 0, go back here. g of 0 is up here at 4. So two different answers. So definitely not commutative. Now, I think you can see the last couple of them here, although they're pretty much cut off. I only really need the graph of f because it only involves this. So I have f of f of 3. That's what this means, inside function, outside function. f of 3, f of 3 over here is 2. So all this that's underlined is 2. So this is f of 2. And f of 2, we've done a couple times now, that's 0. So I hope you can see that okay. 0. Now this is f of f of 4. 
So I have to find f of 4. Now let's go back to the graph. f of 4 is 4. So this part right here is 4. And then f of 4 is still 4. And that was kind of a weird one. I got the same value twice. And that's pretty much how you do those. So if you have a question or a concern about these, just give me a holler and I'll try to walk you through it there. I think this should be more than enough to help you out.